weighing yourself. Good habit, bad habit. Let's discuss. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Kelly O Show. I am Kelly Alexa, your host with the most. <laughs> I am Kelly Alexa, fitness fanatic, confidence coach, serial entrepreneur, and most recently keto convert. That's right, over the last year I went uh, keto uh, begrudgingly, but very happily I can say now because I have lost uh, 36 inches and 30 pounds and I'm keeping it off and definitely consider keto to be my lifestyle. And um, I can share with you that the topic we're talking about today, which is weighing yourself, has been a big part of that journey. And before going keto, I was avoiding weighing myself. Um, and because I was avoiding weighing myself, the fear of the scale became this much bigger problem in my life which is why I am somebody who is definitely an advocate of weighing yourself on a regular basis, ideally daily. And that's part, that's part of, well, that's a big part of what we're going to talk about today. So let's dive into the subject. Let's talk about the uh, pros and cons of weighing yourself, not weighing yourself. And then if you are going to weigh yourself, do you do it weekly? Do you do it daily? Do you do it randomly? Let's dive in. All right, everybody, you know the drill. Make sure you are subscribed and also make sure that when you do hit the subscribe button that you hit that cute little bell button as well so you're notified whenever we put a new video out. We are going to be putting new videos out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday going forward. So get ready, get excited, and again, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell button, and if you love what I'm throwing down here, hit that like button and leave me a comment. Let me know you're here. Let me know what questions you have. All right, everybody, let's dive in and talk about weighing yourself. And I want to say thank you to our friends at Eat Smart, um, Eat Smart Scales that is. They are sponsoring today's video and I have been a customer and a fan and a um, sometime business partner of, um, in other words, I've worked with, with Eat Smart Scales in the past for 15 years, I would say. Um, I have, if you've been following me for a long time, you have seen me post, I have two Eat Smart food scales and I will link those down below as well um, because they are reasonable. They are some of the best in the business. In fact, I still remember Valerie Waters, celebrity uh, fitness trainer, she saw one of my Eat Smart scales and she's like, oh my God, you know, post me the link to that scale because it changes between ounces and grams and pounds. I love it. You know, I don't have a food scale like that. So they have really great food scales that I've been using, again, better part of 15 years. They're very, they're priced exceptionally reasonably. You can get them on Amazon. I will link down below. Um, I pack them when I travel because, you know, if you're in the hotel room and you're ordering like a steak, um, you just have no idea. Sometimes you can get a, a steak and they won't even tell you what the ounces are. But you know, if you're a, a female, you should probably be looking at a portion size of you know, four to six ounces. And sometimes a steak can, can come out and I've weighed it. You know, sometimes a steak can be like, you know, 12, 16, 24 ounces. Just portion sizes are crazy. So Eat Smart Scales have been, you know, a, a company I have heartily recommended for their food scales in the past, and they reached out to connect with me uh, to work with them on promoting their uh, body weight scales. That's what I'm going to call them, body weight scales. I didn't even know they had body weight scales. I just have always known them for their uh, food scales. But how fantastic. And I'm going to link two of their uh, scales down below. So one of them, and I'll actually just put the details for these two different scales down below. Um, both of them are very sleek, very nice looking, but one of them, um, what I like is it's got like their, their highest capacity scale. So for people who have, you know, significantly more weight to lose, this is going to be the great, a great scale for you. Um, and it's got, you know, really great. Uh, you can tell that somebody's put a lot of thought into some of the features um, with backlighting on, you know, just the display um, and, and not only just 
it looks nice, but it functions nice. It, somebody's actually thought through, because trust me, my husband and I have been have been through a lot of bathroom scales and thrown a lot out over the past couple of years. So um, that said, want to say thank you to Eat Smart Scales for um, sponsoring this post. I'm going to link down below to two of their um, uh, most popular scales that they've sent out to us that now uh, my husband and I will be using and we will be sharing um, our review, not only on, I'll be sharing a review on the blog after we've been using it now daily weighing for a month compared to some of the scales that we've used in the past. Um, I'll be putting the review um, on the blog over at kellyalexa.com and then also sharing on social at Instagram and TikTok um, and Facebook as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, but on today's video, what I want to talk about is, you know, why why, you know, there's just this topic of weighing and why I think it is such a good idea to weigh yourself regularly. And in my opinion, and in my experience, I'm a strong advocate for weighing yourself every day. Now, I will tell you that when I say that, and I've actually done a blog post on this previously, um, some people have criticized me and said, oh, which I, I just think this is absurd. You know, that's promoting diet culture, toxic, some, toxic something culture, which is just silly. Um, toxic diet mindset or something like that, you know, to weigh yourself every day. Um, could some people take it to an extreme? Absolutely. Could some people take diet to an extreme? Absolutely. People can take anything to an extreme. So I don't want to encourage that by any means. But here's why I think that weighing yourself every day rather posts will encourage a more healthy relationship with the scale than a non-healthy relationship with the scale. When I was not weighing myself, I developed a completely irrational fear of what I thought I weighed. Um, I was terrified of being weighed at the doctor's office. Anytime I would go to any kind of doctor and they would say, get on the scale. I didn't want to, I didn't want to see what I weighed. I didn't want to see them typing, you know, the, the intake nurse, they'd be typing, you know, my, my stuff into the computer and I wouldn't want to see the screen because I didn't want to know. And I just had all of these delusions of what I should weigh and, and what I, what I thought I should weigh, I'm five, five and, um, what I thought I, I was weighing at that moment in time, because, you know, I knew I was overweight and, and I was always guessing and trying to think. And then I was worried, like, what, what am I? And, you know, just wondering, and it becomes this weird obsession and and then it becomes this unreasonable fear of I don't know what I weigh I know I'm overweight but you know I think I'm I think I'm this but what if I'm this what if I'm this I hope I'm not this and then it's just this horrible feeling of I don't want to know I don't want to know it's like you know when you don't want to check your bank account because you don't want to see how much money you've spent right Um, so that was me for years. Um, and, and it was just a, I think it was a simultaneous thing where what I was going through was massive hormonal imbalance. My body had become this entity that was not working. I was working out, dieting all the time, working out all the time. And my body was not um, cooperating. Um, so here I was in a caloric deficit, um, working out, uh, four days a week with a trainer at gold's gym, um, eating all the best foods, taking all the supplements, taking bioidentical hormones, and just unable to move the needle, uh, as far as weight loss is concerned. Of course, now I know that this was due to insulin resistance. It was due to the fact that my diet was, um, heavily loaded with, um, a, a carb heavy diet. And, and by that, I don't mean the kind of carbs, like tons of bread, tons of packaged foods, tons of junk. I just mean, um, lots of what we would probably call the, the healthy carbs, you know, quinoa, 
rice, um, acai bowls, smoothies, uh, protein shakes, you know, stuff like that. Um, I now know that on a regular daily basis, I was eating foods, lots of fruits, lots of higher carb vegetables, lots of bananas. Um, again, lots of things with rice in it, lots of sushi dinners, um, just lots of things that I now know cause an insulin response. And I now know after being keto for a year and after starting to slowly introduce and test my body out with reintroducing carbs, um, I am one of those people who is extremely sensitive to the carbs that I removed from my diet. Um, very quickly as I started to add carbs back into my diet, um, which my doctor told me to expect, some of that is just immediate water weight to be expected, but I gained some, some weight back very fast with adding back in apples and um, some acai bowls, which <laughs> I learned something about acai bowls. That's another video I'm going to do uh, coming up, so stay tuned. Um, acai bowls are a lot more of a high-carb, uh, fattening, um, insulin response-inducing food than, than one would realize. I mean, even when you're watching the amount of berries that you're putting in, even when you're in control and not putting in a lot of honey, and even when you're not using bananas. I mean, it's crazy. It's really crazy. I mean, it blew my mind. Uh, I was dealing with, I'm, I've got this body, it's not working all of a sudden. I'm dealing with massive hormonal imbalance, um, and I, I don't know what I weigh, and I know I'm overweight, I know I'm not where I wanna be, I know my body doesn't look at all like I, like I want, to, want it to be, I'm not comfortable in a bikini, and, and what happens is body dysmorphia sets in, and that's a very real thing, and then your mind really kind of starts to, to warp and exaggerate things, and so when you're not weighing yourself and you you just start to get very detached from, in a way, reality, you know. Um, there's also things, and, and this is where, when I wrap up this video, I will make some of these recommendations. I think that the way to really stay healthy and stay, um, once you hit your goal, stay in maintenance, is to, it's all about tracking, you know, and some people might say, oh, that's obsessive, whatever. Not really, if something's important to you. And what I mean by that is the way people, in my opinion, once we're adults, the way that we can tend to get out of shape in the first place, um, or the way that we can say we reach our goal weight and, and the way that we can maybe start to gain the weight back is, we don't we don't notice things because maybe you live up north like I used to. And if you're wearing clothes that are, um, you know, down here in the south, you're wearing shorts and kind of body revealing clothes all the time. So it's a little different down here. But up north, it's kind of easy for the better part of the year, eight to nine months, to be kind of camouflaging your body in sweats and baggy clothes. And a lot of people can not, they'll be like not working out, they'll be taking it easy, eating a lot more, um, not measuring themselves, not weighing themselves, um, not taking, you know, progress photos in the mirror and they're wearing, you know, their, their winter clothes. They're wearing their baggy clothes, right? They're wearing their sweats. And then come summer, they go to put on the clothes that they were wearing last summer and that bikini doesn't look right. The shorts are suddenly not, you know, buckling. The, the sports bra that when you, when all of a sudden you decide you're going to start working out again, you go to put your, your workout clothes on and, you know, you can't even tighten your or snap your sports bra on. Everything's like really tight. If you're not tracking things, that's how you can be unpleasantly surprised because you're not weighing yourself, so you didn't notice the scale slowly starting to creep up. You're not measuring yourself, so you didn't notice that your waist went from 27 inches to 28 inches to 29 inches to 32 inches to, you, know, you didn't notice the, the slow but steady creep. And, and so then when it's a year later, 
you hop on the scale or you go to try on a pair of pants or you put on the bikini or you suddenly look at yourself naked in the mirror or, or whatever or you maybe go get a physical and all of a sudden you're like oh my god i'm not just five pounds overweight i'm not just 10 pounds overweight i'm 25 pounds overweight how did that happen well it's happened over a period of time and you didn't notice it because you weren't tracking. And I'm telling you guys, when I, uh, find, I'm trying to think of when was it that I first got on the scale. I first got on the scale when I started reverse dieting. Um, when I hired a trainer, Alex Mazurko, um, which I'm going to link down below to the podcast interview I did with her. Um, sh she is just an exceptional human being. She's somebody I actually might be hiring again now that I'm, you know, in maintenance phase and starting to train again. And I, oh, I'm growing my bangs out, you guys, and they're driving me crazy. Um, now that I'm in maintenance phase and I'm starting to train again and I'm really needing to start to eat more and I'm, I'm just kind of needing some help and guidance, um, I think she could be somebody that could really help me. But, um, when I first hired Alex to help me, I was doing a reverse diet before I went keto and before I hired my new functional medicine doctor, the doctor that had me go keto. Um, that was when I first had to start weighing myself. And that was, I remember she had me fill out a spreadsheet every day. And, but, but that was the first time I got on the scale. And so when I first got on the scale, I had no idea what I was going to weigh. All I knew in my head was the context that this, the lowest I'd weighed in my adult life was when I'd gotten married to my uh, starter husband. Uh, I was 123, or I was either 123 or 125. I'd gotten down to like a, a weight that was, you know, I would, I remember at the time I was happy with myself, um, but everybody that knew me, even my husband, I think at the time, they were like, you're a little, it's, it doesn't look like my butt was very flat. My boobs got smaller. Um, and I just did not look at, as good as I like too many people were like, you're too skinny, which, you know, I've never had the desire to be skinny, skinny. Like that's just not my goal. I just want to be, um, the fittest version of myself. So at 125, that was like the lowest I'd ever been at 5'5", five five, and that was probably too low for me. So in my mind, I was thinking like maybe 130 is probably like maybe my ideal. I was guessing. But I also knew that what I remembered is the last time I remembered feeling really good about myself, I was 138. So I knew that my lowest was 125 and that was too skinny. 138 was the last time probably, I think it was like, I don't know, whenever it was. I don't even remember the year. It was five, six, seven years ago, something like that. Um, when I was like dating this meathead bodybuilder or something like that. And I got, to be, I got down to 138. And, and I remember that that was when I felt really good about myself. I felt good in my skin. I wasn't too skinny. 138 was like, what I felt was a good weight to aim for. 5'5", five, five, 138, 140, whatever. And um, so 138, and, and then I knew that the highest weight I'd ever been was when I'd moved home from Florida, um, you know, before I graduated from college, like when I was 23, 24, so like an idiot, the last quarter of college, my friend Wendy and I moved down to Pensacola, Florida. Instead of staying up in Columbus, Ohio and graduating, we decided to stop going to college, move down to Pensacola to party for a year. And then I came back and finished college. When I moved back from Pensacola after doing nothing but drinking myself into oblivion every single day and eating at Old Country Buffet every single day, nothing but carbs and alcohol, I weighed 178. 5'5", five, five, 178. So that was my highest, was 178. And I, I remember I was a size 12, almost pushing like a 14. Um, and 
138 was my lowest. So I got on the scale when I started working with Alex and I think I was uh, 161.2, I think I was 162. Um, and when I, I worked with her, did the reverse diet, whatever, I stopped weighing myself for a while after I was doing the reverse diet. Um, when I started keto, um, I decided to start weighing myself again because I had stopped. Um, and here's the thing. Whenever I have gone through periods where I have stopped weighing myself, you get this irrational fear of what do I, especially when you're going through a phase where you're not comfortable with your body. I just, I'm just telling you, during that time when I was doing the reverse diet, it was the first time in my life I was weighing myself every single day and recording it. And even though I didn't like the weight that I was, I started to see how your weight can fluctuate, how your weight can, can uh, the, the thing that it taught me too was here I was in a reverse diet. I started off at uh, 161, 162 pounds. And what we did was we took me from being in a caloric deficit of 1600 calories all the way up to 2,500 calories. And I only went up, I only gained about two or three pounds. I think I only went up to about 164 pounds. And I, I still have all those records. So in other words, that was what was most, that was lesson number one is the, doing that reverse diet taught me like, wow, you'd been excessive dieting all these years and what your body needed was a break from dieting because here you increased your daily caloric intake by almost a thousand calories. And instead of gaining an inordinate amount of weight, you just gained a few pounds. Like, what does that tell you? Your body needed some nourishment. So I began to see by weighing myself every day and recording it and seeing the data points and being able to see the trends, like then I started to see it as just that, as a data point. It took the emotion out of it. Well, then when I stopped weighing myself for a while, which was kind of silly because I, I really didn't see or feel that I'd gained a, a bunch of weight or anything, but I got in my own head again and I stopped, you know, when I got ready to go keto and my husband said to me, he's like, I think that you have an opportunity here to really teach your followers something big. Like you're taking a big leap of faith. You're going keto. You should weigh yourself every day and, and tell people that you're taking this leap of faith. You're going to, you know, your doctor says this is going to change your body, blah, blah, blah. This is going to be the thing. Like do it, weigh yourself, track what you're doing. And I'm like, okay. I remember getting on the scale and I was so scared. I was so scared. Like you would think that I was going to get on the scale and it was going to say 250 pounds or something. Well, guess what? I got on the scale and even though I had been still in a reverse diet, I was 160. I think the first day I was 164. The next day I was 161.9 or something. Um, so it could have been again, you know, there's sometimes when you'll see that when you weigh yourself every day, you will see that there are some odd times that the scale can fluctuate anywhere from one to three pounds for no reason. It can be water retention. It can be that you worked out uh, with weights. It could be um, that you're retain, you know, maybe you had a very salty diet the day before. It could be any number of things. Um, so in that very first two days, like, do you think I really lost three pounds? No, it just so happened that that's, that's what it was. But then every, I weighed myself every single day for all of that time. And, and then when I hit my goal weight, I stopped weighing myself and I, I just, maintained for, for quite a long time. And what was funny, you guys, is I stopped weighing myself and then my doctor was working with me and you, I've just published these videos just recently in the past week or so. Um, my, I, I had a consult with my doctor. She said, you're not supposed to be strict 100% keto forever. We really need to start um, reintroducing more carbs, some high carb days. You're starting to train more. We need to start increasing your calories. Let's start experimenting. 
I need you to be comfortable that you're probably going to gain some pounds on the scale right away. You know, you should start weighing yourself again. And so my husband and I started weighing ourselves again. And before that, I had started eating more carbs. And because I hadn't been weighing myself, the first time I got on the scale, it was like, I think the first time I got on the scale, it was 10 pounds more than it was last time. So my lowest weight was 134. The first time I got on the scale, it was 144. Um, I've now been hovering right about 142. Um, so since I've been adding more carbs, just like my doctor said, um, the weight did go up. And now I'm kind of at that place where I'm like, do I, and, and that's a decision. These are all decisions and, and discussions that I, I have to make because I'm, I'm working out now. I wasn't working out while I lost the weight. Um, I need to be fueling my body. I'm working on building muscle. I'm definitely probably going to be seeing the weight on the scale go up as I build muscle. So it's, those are also things that are more reasons why you should be weighing yourself on a regular basis because the more you can get comfortable taking the emotion out of it, out of the, out of the scale and realizing like, okay, here, here's what, here's the deal. Women, we tie an emotion to a number. I'm sure you're watching this and hearing that even I, I might tell you like I'm detached and whatever, but there still is an emotion to me with the fact that I went keto, I lost all this weight, I got to 134. It's very hard for me to tell you that my scale went up to 142, even though there's like a reason for it. I do. You, you're probably watching me seeing that in my brain and the way I'm talking to you, right? That's a real thing. That's an emotional reaction to the number on the scale. So the more that you can weigh yourself and then start to also take other measures to accompany what you're doing with weighing yourself, measure yourself, take progress photos, and, and then look at how your body is changing. As you start to see your body progressing favorably, then what, if you are starting to see that scale go up and you go, like say in my case, I continue to strength train and, and lift heavy and say that scale goes from 142 to 145 to 150. Weighing 150 pounds at 5'5 is not a problem. The truth is I really shouldn't care what the scale is. I mean, I should care if I'm 250 pounds at 5'5. That would not be appropriate. But, you know, when we're talking about going from, you know, sh should I, why would I need to be obsessed with staying at 134? When I hit 134, all I remember thinking is I feel very skinny fat. I feel very, I don't have muscle. I feel very like my boobs were getting too small. Um, my butt felt very flat. I didn't like my body shape. Um, and the second I, I got on the scale and I didn't like what I saw, I started to pick myself apart. There is strength in weighing yourself every day and, and being able to see it as a data point. When you don't weigh yourself every day, in my opinion, and even if you just, because the, because the scale can fluctuate, because our weight on the scale can fluctuate so much, this is why I think every day is better than just once a week. It's, you know, once a week is, is okay, but I just think you have to keep in mind, think about how I told you I weighed myself that first day I was like 164 and the next day I was 161. What if you weighed yourself that one day and you're 164? You weighed yourself on a bad day. You see what I'm saying? I, I'd rather weigh myself more and have more data points and be able to see that there's fluctuations and then you're not tied to that. So... I know I've given you a lot of detail here, but I think you're, you're picking up the big picture. When you don't weigh yourself, you start to get in your head. You start to get all kinds of messed up. You start to wonder. You start to make assumptions that aren't there. When you do weigh yourself, you are able to become detached from the emotion. You are able to see that weight is just, you are able to see yourself more like a scientific experiment. And I mean that in a good way. Um, there's just so much more strength. I feel once, once I got back on the scale this last time, after having reached my goal 
and, and I hadn't weighed myself for a while. And then I started to work out again and, and Steve and I made the decision. We said, we're going to start weighing ourselves again. And both he and I were up on, on the scale. We were both like, oh, wow. You know, he said, I've gained this much, you know, weight. I, you know, I want to get to here. And I'm like, oh my God, the scale's up. Like, you know, so for me, like I told you, I think right now I'm 142. Um, and who knows, you'll see, I'm going to share all my results coming up in, in upcoming videos. All I, I, I came out of that going, never again will I go through a period where I'm not weighing myself because it is such a great way to track. <sighs> Do you hear my dog? He's sleeping down here. Um, it's such a great way to keep yourself from letting um, the weight creep back on. It's such a great way to track progress. It's such a great way to keep the emotion out of weight loss, weight gain, etc. I firmly believe that contrary to what some people say, which some people say weighing yourself every day is, you know, toxic diet culture. I think it's just the opposite. I think that weighing yourself gives you a healthier relationship with your body, a healthier relationship with the scale and getting yourself away from who cares what the number is. I think we live in a day and age where there's just um, much more information online, much uh, a stronger diversity of there, there's just there's more women online now who are lifting heavy weights, um, sharing more appropriate uh, body weights that they weigh. I see more women sharing like, hey, I weigh 150 pounds. I weigh 160 pounds. I weigh 140 pounds. There's less of what I grew up with, which are, you know, when I grew up, you just used to always see articles and uh, about celebrities who were a size zero. It was like, I grew up with Melrose Place. I grew up with Allie McBeal. I grew up with talk about Jennifer Aniston, the, the group on Friends and everybody being a size zero or double zero or negative two. That's what I grew up exposed to. I didn't grow up with the Kardashians. I didn't grow up with people getting butt implants and trying to be curvier and bigger. I grew up with people trying to be as small and like being a negative two. What is that? So it's a better time. And I, again, want to just close this video by saying, I think weighing yourself is the weighing yourself and measuring yourself and taking progress photos is the best way to get healthy, get fit, get to your weight loss goal, and then stay there. As far as I'm concerned, I will be weighing myself every day. Sure, I miss a day here and there, but as a practice, my husband and I will be weighing ourselves every day until we hit the bucket, kick the bucket, whatever it is. So I'm going to link down below um, to the Eat Smart uh, body weight scales that I recommend. One is, like I said, their maximum capacity scale for folks who have a lot of weight to lose. You want to check that out. And then one is their uh, other scale so that if you don't need to use that maximum capacity scale, you want to check out this other digital scale. They're both fantastic. Um, again, and I would also recommend, I'm going to link down to the low to some of my favorite of their kitchen scales as well, because like I said, I've been using them and uh, recommending them for years. They're a fantastic company. I strongly recommend them. And um, if you have any questions whatsoever about um, what I shared here, about weighing yourself, about how to track it, um, or about, you know, working with Alex, the trainer I recommended, she comes uh, from the Level 10 coaching group. Strongly recommend them as well. I will link that up below. But thank you guys for listening. I hope this was helpful. I hope it was encouraging. Happy to answer any questions. Leave them in the comment below. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. We'll see you next time on The Kelly O Show. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I hope this video on weighing yourself was helpful. Um, because I mentioned so much about my keto journey, I am going to link to the playlist uh, for all of the other keto videos that I've done here here for you to peruse. And if you have any questions, of course, reach out kelly at kellyalexa.com or just leave a comment in one of these videos. Thanks again.